Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. I'd like to call the regular school committee meeting to order. Today is June 22nd, 2021, and we are starting our meeting tonight at 7.17 p.m. Now we got a couple of subcommittee meetings prior to this evening's meeting. Uh, we are being televised live on PBD Access TV, as we always are, and um, we have real-time public participation can be addressed to the PBD School Committee utilizing Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. The application will allow users to view the meeting and make a comment during public participation. And as we have for the past 15, 16 months, um, if you would like to be heard during public participation, please raise your hand uh, on the link and uh, Dr. Vidala will bring you into the meeting. I'd like to first start with a call to order. Uh, we're going to start with a moment of silence and then go to the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, but I wanted to turn it over to Mrs. Dunn um, to start off our moment of silence. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to ask for everyone to keep in your prayers the family of Vincent Smigliano, better known as Vinny. Vinny was a longtime bus driver and a dispatcher for our transportation department and he just recently passed away and he was a really funny guy and very very nice I got to know Vinny as a parent when my children were really little and they were going to take the bus for kindergarten and um, we only talked on the phone for a long time and then one day after I was elected as the school committee member I ended up getting to meet Vinny in person and he was just as funny in person and just as kind. So uh, keep his family in your prayers and uh, remember that he worked here for a long time. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Everyone, please join me. Okay, and our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes uh, to be approved tonight. The first one is the June 2nd, 2021 budget meeting minutes. I'd open that up for discussion and vote. Motion Mr. to approve notice. the June 2nd, 2021 budget, me budget meeting minutes. Okay, you've heard the motion by Mr. Arnotis to approve the June 2nd, 2021 budget meeting minutes, seconded by Mrs. Dunn. Any comment? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. Motion to approve the June 8th, 2021 public hearing on the budget meeting minutes. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. You've heard the motion for approval of the public hearing on the budget meeting minutes of June 8th, 2021. Motion seconded by Mrs. Dunn. Roll call vote, please, for approval. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. And motion to approve the June 8th, 2021 regular school committee meeting minutes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Arnotis. You've heard the motion by Mr. Arnotis, seconded by Mrs. Dunn for approval of the regular school committee meeting minutes of June 8, 2021. On those minutes, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I support the, the meeting minutes because they are accurate as printed. However, there are numerous typos and I would like to ask permission if I could just submit a list of those typographical errors to ask that they be corrected. They are just, you know, spelling errors, names, um, just a lot of, a lot of different things in the minutes that um, should be corrected to make them accurate. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Uh, we have a couple of warrants for approval to p this evening. Yeah. I'd like to go to Mr. Olympio. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, for the approval of warrant number. 4789 dated June 22nd, 2021, in the amount of $11,769.39, subject to audit. Second. Okay, thank you. You've heard the motion for approval of warrant number 4789. The motion was made by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? 
Yes. Mr. Anotis. Yes. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of warrant number 4790 in the amount of $909,966.91 dated June 22, 2021, subject to audit. Second. Great, thank you. You've heard the motion for approval of warrant number 4790. The motion was made by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote on approval, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Anotis? Yes. Okay, thank you. If there's no objection, uh, I'd like to hold continued business. I know we have some people here this evening. Uh, can we go to the superintendent's report? Um, everybody okay with holding? No, obje no objection. Great, thank you. So we'll go to uh, Dr. Vidal. I know we have some special guests tonight. Yes, we do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so today we have two of our students from PBD High School, and we're very excited to bring them up there. A lot of times we talk about student voice and really getting student agency where they can bring ideas to the committee or to the school as a whole and really change their community. And we have two students today that would like to come and make a presentation, and we're just so delighted to have them, very excited about the work that they're doing at PBD High School. We have uh, a rising sophomore, Katie Amico, and a rising junior, Carissa Frattato, and they have this wonderful idea that we fully support and wanted to bring it to the committee uh, and, and just really thank them for their bravery and their courage to come forward. It's not easy to be a high school student and to present to a group of adults, um, but you know they've really held themselves in high regard in, in the school community, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to speak to the, the community on behalf of their classmates. So, uh, Katie and Carissa, please take it away. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katie Amico, and this is Carissa Furtado. She is representing the Culture Club and Gay Straight Alliance, GSA. Thank you for allowing us to present this to you. We are proposing that PBD raises a progress pride flag on the flagpole at PBD High School during Pride Month every year. A couple of weeks ago, I was scrolling through social media and I noticed that someone shared that the, Dan that the city of Danvers had raised a progress pride flag at their high school. I thought to myself, it would be amazing if PBD could do this too. As a class of 2024 co-president, I am always on the lookout for ways to improve the PBD High School community. I always make it a priority to advocate for others. It's so important that everyone knows they have a voice. I want to be on the right side of history. Since I am a strong ally to the LGBTQ plus community, I brought the Progress Pride flag idea to, to Principal Magno's attention. He was super supportive and he suggested that I work with the Culture Club and GSA who've combined clubs this year. I'm also so happy to say we have the support from my fellow 2024 class officers. If you all support the Progress Pride flag being raised during Pride Month at Peabody High School, it would show the LGBTQ plus community in Peabody that they are safe at PVMHS and we support them being themselves. The Culture Club, GSA and I think it is important for students in the LGBTQ plus community in our school and in Peabody to feel accepted, loved and included. This will have a positive impact on those students and make them enjoy being in a school that shows their support. I think the flag could also spark many positive conversations where people could learn how to be more respectful and kind to others in the LGBTQ plus community. Well, Katie and Krista, that was terrific. Uh, excellent job, very well put together, very well um, stated this evening. Um, I'm, I can certainly say that I'm 100% in support of this. I thank you for bringing it forward. Um, open it up to any school committee members. Mr. Olympio. Great job, both of you. Uh, absolutely, we support this 100%. And uh, just very, uh, it's just nice to know that we have uh, some real rising stars coming up through the ranks. And you represent and make Peabody very proud. and. Uh, it's important that we want everyone to feel safe and included. So this is a great thing that you brought forward to us. Thank you. Yes, well said, Mr. Lapeel. This is done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to both of you. I'm very proud to, to know you because you've done something that's so important in leadership. You stood up for your classmates and that's really important. I think this is a wonderful idea. I'm glad you came forward. I'm glad that you 
brought up the fact that you want to have this done every year. That's important because I know that Pride Month, we're coming to the end of it right now. So we've got to get the flag up now, but in the following years, you'll be able to get that up right away and have it up for the whole month to show all of the students and their families that they are cared for, that they are respected, and that they are valued. So this was really a great presentation. Uh, very, very well done. And uh, again, I'm very proud of you for speaking up for your classmates and for being student leaders. Also very well stated, Mrs. Dunn. That was great. Mr. Arnotis. Katie and Krista, thank you so much for being here tonight. Your leadership, you should be very proud of yourselves for coming in here tonight and um, standing up for your community, as Mrs. Dunn said. Uh, being inclusive, I'm happy to support this tonight. Um, you're making Peabody proud, and I'm sure you're making Mr. Amico proud as well. Uh, so thank you so much for being here tonight. You guys are leaders in our high school, and um, can't wait to see what you guys do next. Keep going. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, great job, Mr. Arnotis. Mr. Hockman. Thank you, Mr. President, through you to these uh, two wonderful uh, young ladies. Uh, what courage for you to come here today um, to ask us for something that we all support. Uh, so, uh, but it's, it's still important that um, you're here today and, and we're talking publicly about something that, you know, 30 years ago wasn't so public, 20 years ago wasn't so public. And thankfully, it's getting more public because we need to support uh, everybody. Uh, for those of you that um, don't know, uh, little Joey Amico plays baseball for me. Uh, he's my catcher and second baseman, and he's a talented young guy. And we all know Beth Amico is a talented woman leading the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Katie is really showing her talents here today and her leadership, as Miss Griffin recognized. Uh, and I wanted to just make something known that I knew for a while, uh, Joseph Amico might be the least talented person in his family. <laughs> but like that, to make a motion to that effect? That, 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 just, that just speaks volumes of the talent that really comes out of a really terrific and dynamic uh, family. So uh, kudos to Joe, you, and Beth, um, two terrific kids who are doing great things. So good for you guys. Great. Thank you, Mr. Huckman. Mr. Miko? Thank you, through the chair. Thank you for presenting, this is awesome. Um, I always have a rule, I think Katie has heard this, um, work hard and be a good person. And the two of you are being really great people today by advocating for a cause and advocating for your classmates. So you should be proud of yourself and your family should be proud of you too, thank you. Terrific, great comments by everybody. And again, congratulations and thank you both. Uh, I think we're all gonna be very happy to see that flag raised above Peabody High School. I did wanna mention, we are having a pride flag raising at City Hall this Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, kind of a little embarrassed that it's so late in the month, but we wanted to have it on a Saturday to give the opportunity for more people to come. And there were a number of conflicts where we're doing this with Nagley and some other sponsors, and this was the day that worked for all of us. Um, so hopefully you may be, able to, may be able to join us that day. It would be great. I think we're gonna have a nice crowd for this event. Again, it's this Saturday, right in front of Peabody City Hall uh, at 10 a.m. Um, but let's make a motion. Before we go to the motion, Mr. Miko, something else you wanted to add? I'll make the motion. Yeah. That, is that okay? Please make the motion. I'd like to make a motion to raise the progress pride flag at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School every year. Second. In June. All right, for the month of June, everybody heard the motion. Motion was seconded by Mr. Hockman, or seconded by everybody? Everyone. <laughs> okay, um, roll call vote, just to make it official. Mr. Hockman. Yes. Mr. Olympio. Yes. Mr. Amico. Yes. Mrs. Dunn. Yes. Mr. Anotis. Yes. Great, thank you both very much. Excellent job. I have one thank question. Thank you so much. When will the flag be raised at the high school? Do you have a flag to go up the hill? Is there one there? Yep. Yeah. Through the chair, I actually called a couple of flag uh, stores, one in Beverly that is very well known, and they don't have an updated um, uh, pride flag 
I'm not sure if the one that we have at City Hall is, but maybe I was thinking that we, we fly it at City Hall and then maybe um, a few days later, is that something we can do at the high school? Uh, oh. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate that and make sure Perfect. we do. We Thank do have you. one at City Hall and we can, you know, we can uh, make that work, but that's good news. Thank you. Let's get that up as soon as we can. All right, excellent. Thank you both again. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we're going to go right back to continued business. We're going to go uh, back to item number four. Uh, there are two items I think we can move through pretty quickly. And wanted to ask, Mrs. Dunn, do you have any update on the Welch School MSBA project, Mrs. Dunn? Uh, actually, yes, we had a great response for our community meeting number three. That was last week. And uh, a lot of great information came out in that presentation. Uh, it, was, it was really, really good. And one of the biggest announcements made that night was that we have a Welch School building project website. And it is on our school department website. People can access that and they can check in on all kinds of details of the project. Our, our minutes, our agendas of our meetings are all listed there. Members of the committee are listed there. And it is being updated with a lot of the, um, the drawings from the designers and uh, from the construction management company and of course our owner's project manager. So a lot of good things going on. This week we have meetings, as always, and um, there are meetings with the recreation department because we want to start coordinating with them because there will be impacts on the fields at the Welch as the construction goes forward. So we need to work with them on that. And um, talking with the Conservation Commission just to make sure that everything is um, in line with their requirements because we do border on the wetlands. And right now there's nothing, uh, nothing that has to be tended to, but we do want to work closely with them uh, just to see if we can um, actually get some improvements in the area as well, just some, some minor things, but this is the time to do it. So it's moving right along and still a lot of fun. Great, thank, <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Any questions? All right, we'll continue those uh, updates every month or every meeting. And also we had uh, item number two on continued business communication um, to the city council regarding the center and Peabody Veterans Memorial High School statement of interest. And I think all of us know uh, we had an excellent meeting last week with the city council. Uh, Dr. Vidala and I presented to the city council looking for approval on our vote to submit to the MSBA uh, statement of interest uh, under the core program for the Peabody Veterans Memorial High School and the Center School, uh, both projects that I think would uh, pay great dividends for our community. Uh, both of those projects were submitted or were presented to the City Council. They were unanimously approved, which is great to have that support from the City Council. I think that goes a long way with past submittals we've made to the MSBA, uh, where we've always been able to present a very strong united front that we all believe as school committee members and as city councilors that these are projects that are important for our community, which has been terrific. Uh, so both were presented, both were unanimously approved, and they're being submitted this week. They were due uh, Friday, June 25th, and they will be presented this week. I'm not sure when we will hear um, in years past. It's been typically in November we hear where we stand. Um, so we'll pass that word along certainly as quick as, as quickly um, once we hear anything. Uh, but very happy and very appreciative of the support of the City Council uh, for those two important votes. Anybody want to add or, or ask any questions on that? Okay. All right, thank you. So now let's go back to the superintendent's report. Uh, Dr. Vidala has some other items. Uh, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Vidala. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is the introduction of the new Peabody Veteran Memorial High School assistant principal. Uh, so we have Dr. Samantha Meyer with us tonight. And Dr. Meyer comes to us and she has a, an incredibly impressive resume. Dr. Meyer began her career in education as a biology teacher. She then served as a dean and assistant principal at the high school level 
She has served as a middle school principal and most recently as the high school principal in Salem. Uh, so we are very fortunate to have Dr. Maya coming to Peabody Veterans Memorial High School. She was the unanimous pick of the search committee, and then she met the administrative team and was also, again, uh, the unanimous pick of that, uh, that committee as well. Uh, can't say enough about her as an instructional leader, as an advocate for student agency and student voice. Uh, she holds a doctorate in educational leadership from UMass Boston, and uh, very happy and pleased to present Dr. Samantha Meyer as the next assistant principal of PBD Veterans Memorial High School. Oh. I do want to make one correction, Dr. Vidala. I am certified in biology and physics, but I was primarily a phys physics teacher. Uh, so I just thank you for having me here. It's good to be here in person and not on Zoom and on the Brady Bunch screen as we've seen over the past year. Uh, I am excited to work again with Dr. Vidala and Mr. Magno. Uh, these are people that I know they are focused on students and learning and uh, and doing the right thing in equity. And so that's that's uh, it's a great feeling for me to be able to kind of join forces again and to uh, join Peabody. Well, terrific. Wonderful to have you. Uh, your resume was outstanding. Uh, very happy to have you on board. A lot of work for all of us going forward to uh, rebound from the pandemic and uh, I'm very excited about the future of Peabody Veterans Memorial High School and hopefully soon we can get on track for a new Peabody Veterans Memorial High School in the years ahead. Um, any questions for Dr. Meyer or any words at this time? Mr. Hockman? I, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for uh, coming here tonight and uh, greeting us. It's something that we historically do when we have a um, principal or an assistant principal, certainly of our flagship school, high school. Uh, so it's nice to put a face to a name. Uh, and not over Zoom, like you said. And uh, as uh, Mayor Betancourt said, uh, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, and, and glad that you're here. Sounds like boots are on the ground already, and you know, ready to take off. Um, I suspect you're starting July one, and um, or so, and, or so, and, and your commitments. Are, you know, and you'll be here to you know provide us with your uh, knowledge and expertise and energy and all those things. We have a tremendous high school that has course offerings beyond uh, what most high schools in our area have. Uh, and I think that's something that this committee takes pride in um, and that we want to see continue and expand it and uh, have all of our students at the high school flourish. I think there's an opportunity to recapture some students who, um, who either they or their families don't think as highly of the high school as we do uh, and bring them to Peabody Veterans Memorial High School to experience uh, Tanner Pride and uh, you know what all of the city of Peabody has to offer. So welcome, I look forward to working with you and uh, hope that you're gonna have some nice time this summer to enjoy uh, some time for yourself as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huckman. Any other comments or anything at this time, Mr. Miko? Dr. Meyer, welcome to Peabody. It's a great community. Um, I've only lived here 18 years. Um, I was a newcomer and um, this, this community really um, gets behind people and really um, appreciates people who work hard, and I know you will, so thank you for being here, and, and lots of luck. Thank you. I just thank want to say, too, that this was the first opportunity I've had to interact with the PBD students, and I'm just I'm thrilled and excited to be working with the kids here. All right. This is done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Dr. Meyer. You'll enjoy your time at the high school. It's a wonderful school. It really is, and you've already seen tonight yeah. We've got a lot of awesome students up there, so uh, I hope you have a, a, a really good experience up there and that you can help us with our school and, and keep moving it forward. Thank so you. wish you luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Dr. Meyer, welcome. Thank you for being here. Just want to wish you well. Um, let us know if you need anything. That's what Thank we're here for. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Mr. Olympio? One big thing, thank you for coming here tonight, but you're gonna have to learn what the bull's up uh, chair. So, <laughs> has she been practicing that? She's a quick Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm a quick learner, I'll figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming. Great, congratulations again. Thank you for being here. Look forward to your work at the high school. Uh, really tremendous, um, we really have a tremendous school community that's overcome a lot because of the, the building certainly needs some repairs and things. So we've been very fortunate to have wonderful teachers and administrators and people working very hard over there. And um, welcome aboard. I think it's going to work out. 
Thank you so much. Thank you.
Okay, I'd like to go uh, back to the superintendent's report. Uh, Dr. Vidal, I know you have some additional items. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as we wrap up the year, uh, under typical, typical circumstances, we, we would have a celebration for the retirees, but I did want to recognize this was an incredibly challenging year, and our educators really stepped up, and they did a wonderful job. And so I, I do want to publicly recognize we have 20 retirees this year, uh, so I just want to publicly recognize them and for all their work and their years of service to the Peabody Public Schools. So first we have Arlene Broughton, Guidance Counselor at the Higgins, Olga Shavs, the ELL uh, teacher at the Carroll, Jane Dontona, a reading teacher at the Welch, Winona Danito, an English teacher at the Higgins, Deb Donovan, kindergarten teacher at the South, Leslie Ann Entwistle, special education teacher at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School, Kathy Fortin, our senior clerk here at the Higgins, Abby Gore, history teacher at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School, Kristen Hutton Fay, our IEP team chairperson at the Integrated Preschool, Mary Ingersoll, a preschool teacher at the Welch Elementary School. We also have Diane, Diane Kading, a paraprofessional at the McCarthy, Kelly uh, Nizak, the ELL teacher at the South, Kathy Marag I, I, I always get Kathy's last name, Marigioglio, a paraprofessional at the McCarthy, Christina McCarthy, health teacher, uh, who serves uh, s several elementary schools, Kathy Pingree, our phys ed teacher at the high school, Marianne Reeves, grade two teacher at the Carroll, Susan Robert, speech and language pathologist, district-wide, Charlene Shalkowski, a grade two teacher from the center, Marie Vigna O'Neill, grade one teacher at the Welch, and Sylvia Ward, grade four teacher at the Burke. Uh, these 20 educators are retiring this year after several years of service. Uh, their combined years of service and the number of students that they have served here uh, in the Peabody Public Schools is amazing. Uh, their reach and their touch um, extends far beyond um, just the students that they have now, but for years and years. And, and we'd just like to publicly thank them for their service and wish them the best of luck as they move forward. This is done. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. It's amazing when you think about how many students and families these people touched as far as, as teaching and, and being educators and, and their service. We, we can never really truly appreciate what they've done. Um, and they're all going to be missed very, very much by everyone. I know normally we do have a bit of a, of a ceremony, and I'd like to see if perhaps if we could have that sometime in the fall, if it's possible. I know we have to see how conditions are, but just to be able to have them all together and be able to honor them, uh, I think it's it's important. So as long as they, they know that uh, th there is gonna be a, a bit of a recognition, they can't get away that easily without having us meet with them and say goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Mr. Hockman? Yeah, thank you. I wholeheartedly agree, Ms. Uh, Dunn. You know, we, we have retirement ceremonies, and uh, sometimes, I think more recently, we've had, I think, either principals or colleagues buy each retiree a book, you know, with, uh, something that they um, believe they, the retiree would enjoy, and kind of a symbol now that they have a little more time, or presumably have a little more time on their hands. Uh, but I agree, something in the fall would be extremely nice and appropriate, and, and I do want to thank Dr. Vidal for putting this together. It's important, um, as we all know, to recognize uh, teachers and staff members who have put in, uh, many of these people are, boy, their careers started and ended here, um, and they've been with us for a long, long time, a bunch of talented people. I would like to uh, take a moment to add two people who are close and dear to me, uh, who aren't educators, uh, but also have a significant role uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with our students. Um, you know, Kathy Vinagro, who is a dear friend of mine, uh, is crossing guard at the Carroll School and is beloved by that entire building and community. Uh, and she's uh, sadly retiring. So I wanted to uh, wish her well as also. And all of the people, the 20 plus Kathy, are employees of the PBD public school system. But we also have people that touch our kids on a daily basis that we don't pay. Uh, or at least I don't think we pay them. I think they come out of a different budget. And Officer Rick Cochran, who is our school resource officer for the elementary schools, uh, has been phenomenal, uh, known throughout the city by, by young people as Officer Rick. Uh, and that's the type of relationship that he's built. And um, I think he's a little different than the 21 that we're talking about, the 20 up on the board and Kathy. 
uh, because Rick isn't our employee. So I'd like to make a motion that we send uh, either to the police chief or to Rick directly uh, a letter expressing our appreciation for the service the police department generally and Rick Cochran specifically provide to our students on a daily basis. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Dockman. Thank you for bringing up both Kathy and Officer Rick. That's terrific. Two people who've really contributed uh, greatly to our school system and to our city. Uh, thank you for bringing those names forward. Uh, you've heard the motion by Mr. Hockman, seconded by Mr. Olympio. All in favor? That's a vote? Yes. And, and while we're on the subject, if I may keep the floor, Mr. Mayor, um, I, you know, we do need, you know, we're celebrating all these people, but we're, we're moving forward as well. And we've either, um, if, you, if you already haven't, and I suspect you probably have, uh, Dr. Vidala engaged in a conversation with uh, Chief Griffin about what the next um, step is with Officer Cochran leaving. It, you know, it's important in this environment, in this day and age, uh, not only having school resource officers that have great relationships with students and staff and families, but you know there's obviously a protection component to it. Uh, if we can see what's going on there, and I think we should make sure we include him in any celebration that we have for our retirees, because our school resource officers are a true part of the day-to-day -day operation of these schools. We couldn't do it without them, so they're part of the staff. Their money comes out of a different account, but they're still part of our schools. I agree. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And it, they are, our school resource officers are an integral part of our school community, keeping our kids safe, keeping our families safe. Um, and, and they go above and beyond. They're, they're, at, they're at events in the morning. They're at events at night. Um, and Officer Rick has, has done an incredible job. And so the, the chief and I have spoken about this, and I will provide the, the committee with an update as, as soon as we have one. Uh, so moving on to our, the next item on our agenda is an update on our career and technical education programs. So I wanted just to give an overview of our course offerings uh, and enrollment for this year, the 2020-2021 uh, school year. We added, as you know, we added a, a sixth program um, to our offerings and we saw an increase in enrollment. So this year we have cosmetology had 44 students enrolled, our culinary arts and baking arts had 53 students enrolled, our early childhood education program had 59 students enrolled. Uh, we have our electronic engineering program. This one had 23 students enrolled and we're seeing uh, that the partnership with RCN and the fiber cabling, we're seeing um, an increase in interest in this area. Um, so we're really excited about that. Medical assisting uh, had 50 students enrolled. In the first year of protective services, we had 25 students enrolled. Uh, we were also able to offer an exploratory where kids could get an overview. Um, they had 129 freshmen this year that were enrolled in that for a total of 383 students uh, at Peabody Veterans Memorial enrolled in our career in technical education. So you know, working with uh, Ms. Ferry, who is currently a part-time director of, of CTE and our guidance department, we're really looking to expand our course offerings, making sure that we provide as much as we can to our students. And so our course requests for next year, and, and we do anticipate that some of these will, will go up, uh, but we have 44 students who have requested cosmetology, 49 in the culinary and baking arts, 54 in early childhood education. Uh, we've seen a little bit of an increase in the electronic engineering program. Medical assisting is staying strong with 48 students. And we see our largest jump in the protective services going from 25 to 40 students next year. And we do anticipate that that will increase each year. Uh, that has become a very popular program. And we'll have 130 students enrolled in our exploratory. So a total of 394 students enrolled. So it's, a, it's an increase of six. Uh, total, which we're seeing, you know, as the seniors go out and the freshmen come in, we're still seeing increases in, in that program. So we're excited about that. Um, we are exploring opportunities for additional programs. I know one that was discussed last year, and we're still looking at an IT type program uh, where, where students would be able to do some of the uh, instructional technology uh, services. So that's something that, that we are looking at to expand. Uh, but these are course offering, offerings, and uh, they are alive and well. These courses are filled, and uh, we'll continue to support this as best as we can. So I know that there may be some, some questions on this. Um, I know that one, one of the questions, I know, just to, to preempt, um, one, of, one of the questions I know will come up is there was a question on the number of hours that our students were able to do. So right now, they are working on periods five, six, and seven as the culinary classes to make sure that they have enough um, time 
allotted to those, and I know they had a, a longer period for block one, which was able to get them some additional hours as well. Um, but so right now, every schedule that they're looking at, uh, you know, is definitely catered around making sure that the CTE students have the sufficient number of hours to get all the licenses that they need. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. I'll open that up to the committee. Any questions or comments? Mr. Arnotis? Sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Vidala, I, I, I don't mean to keep beating the horse on this. I'm not going to say it's dead because I don't want it to be dead, um, but I do want to talk about the After Dark program. I think the, the council the other night made some great points in support of that program, and I am curious as to whether there is any news on maintaining the program, changing the program to some, some form that may I may not be aware of, or a additional program that's going to fill the same need. Um, I'm, I'm curious where we are on that because I, I'm going to keep going until um, I think we can, we can find a route to take, but I am curious if there's any news on that right now. I, I appreciate that. So uh, one of the things that we've uncovered is something to do with admissions. And so I know the Board of Education brought this up today. Uh, they're really looking at uh, the admissions policies for career and technical education schools and vocational schools. And I think as, as we find the students that want to go into the construction management are students that were interested in eighth grade and didn't get in. So this year, we're really trying to look at the individual students and meet their needs. And so I am pleased to announce that one of the students who was really interested in going to the VOC in eighth grade didn't get in. Uh, we were able to connect with the superintendent and she shared that that, that student was admitted a transfer and will be able to get into the construction management program. So we're very excited about that. And and that's what we'd like to do is really focus on the individual students and their needs and make sure that they're getting into the programs um, that, that they want. So we have great programs here um, and we want to make sure that our Peabody students have access to these programs and that we're not competing with Essex Tech for cosmetology and culinary arts uh, and, and that our, our kids can, can come here and, and get a great um, experience and a great vocational experience here at Peabody High School and that the seats that we have at Essex Tech can go to plumbing and carpentry and construction management and the things that we don't offer. So uh, we're, we're continuing to explore other opportunities and you know really working very well with the superintendent over there to make sure our kids have access to any program that they're interested in. And so as, as we work with our guidance department, we're making sure that they're identifying the kids that want to get into those programs and we're making sure we get them access. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Mrs. Dunn? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just so you all know, I'm the chairperson of the admissions subcommittee at the Essex North Shore Agricultural and Technical Institute. It was a subcommittee that was formed to look at the admissions policy and um, knowing that the Department of Ed is working on an admissions policy. And I, I just want to tell everyone, the admissions policy at Essex North Shore is the one that most schools are looking to follow. It is not one of the ones that is creating problems. So the admissions policy there is a really, really detailed process to admit students into the programs. And Contrary to what a lot of people think, a lot of people are upset that kids are going to Essex North Shore taking seats away from the plumbing students or students taking seats away from the trades people. They're not. Many of the programs that the kids take at Essex North Shore actually do require further education after they graduate, whether it's an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. So they're in line with what they need to do to follow through on their actual programming. The programs there are open to everyone. They have an interview process. They look at grades, they look at attendance, they look at discipline, they look at a recommendation from the guidance department. They also have an appeals process that people can participate in, and that's one thing we do need to make sure that our staff is aware of so that they can advise people of that, that there is an appeals process. It's right on the website, but they, they do want to get that word out. And one of the things that uh, the DESE question is about is the discipline aspect. And the schools are not supposed to look at minor discipline issues and 
that is one that they are going back and forth on. I don't know what the result of today's hearing was, actually. I had heard the hearing was stopped by a group of parents who were protesting masks and it brought, brought the process to a halt. Um, but the, the whole thing is that it's a, it's a lengthy uh, discussion. It is very, very intense and I think everyone here should be very happy that Essex North Shore is not only following the DESC regulations, but it's being used as a model for other schools as far as the admissions process and policies that are in place. And the amount of data that they have been going through to make sure that they have a student body that's indicative of the surrounding area is really intense. They go through all kinds of, of data to make sure that they're matching the surrounding communities. And one thing that's skew skewing the data is the students who come from the other surrounding communities, we have the 17 sending communities, Peabody is one of them, but there are between 35 and 53 areas where students come from, they come for agriculture. And that's one thing that's been figured in on the actual data, but it's different than other vocational schools because the way that Essex North Shore was set up, they had to maintain the agricultural piece because of Essex Aggie. And it does skew some of those numbers, not so much for Peabody, but for other communities. The offerings there are wonderful and we do have some duplicate programs, and we knew that going into Essex North Shore, that when, when that school was created, that we were going to still be able to continue our programs, which is cosmetology, culinary arts, the early childhood, and the medical assisting. Any new programs that come up, for example, the, uh, the um, law enforcement, in order to open a new program, you work in conjunction with the local regional vocational school, which Peabody has been doing. So we're not duplicating efforts. And uh, we do have students who are going to Essex North Shore for programs that are not necessarily the traditional trades. In other words, carpentry, plumbing, auto mechanics, any of those things. We do have students who are going there for biotechnical engineering, for horticulture, floriculture. Um, oh my gosh, they, they, they have 25 different courses that they offer. I'm really thrilled about the student who got accepted. That's the student who brought to my attention that we had pulled out of the program and I will be honest and for the record, I'm very upset as a school committee member that we were never notified of that because I don't know how we would have found out that we weren't in the after dark program if it hadn't been for that student's family contacting me and letting me know about it and then bringing it here. That really bothers me because to me, vocational education is a curriculum decision and this committee made a decision to go into that program and taking us out of it was a big change that we should have at least been able to discuss based upon facts, figures, whatever you made your decision on. And it points out to me that yes, that student got in and I'm thrilled, but there are other students who for whatever reason will never get into that program. He has a very involved family that followed through on the process they followed through with appeals, and he applied, and there was room. The cost of that program was negligible. It really is, Dr. Vidala. Because I know everybody keeps saying, well, we have to pay our Chapter 74 money for that program. That's true. It's only because of the method of accounting from the state. When a student was going into that CTE expansion program, they were on our roles as a regular student because they were not getting an, a vocational education. If they were taking a vocational class here in Peabody at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School, we would have recouped Chapter 74 funding for that student. 
Instead, when that regular education student from Peabody became a member of the expansion program, Peabody needed to send the Chapter 74 funding for that student to Essex North Shore. That money, that's a wash. That, it comes into our district, and yes, we have to write a check, but it's only because the state, instead of sending the money directly to Essex North Shore, sends it here, and then Mr. Scanlon has to write a check. Last year, it cost, what, $26,000 for the students in that program. The cost of the bus, it's a one-way bus. They take the Essex North Shore bus home to Peabody because it's coming to Peabody with the other Peabody students. So it was a one-way trip from Peabody High School to Essex North Shore. I am very frustrated because I know that we closed the door for some opportunities and I really do think that it was a combination of COVID, students not realizing what the program entailed, it just didn't have a chance to get off the ground, but other surrounding communities are participating in it, and they will have students going to that program. There are not enough seats for vocational students in Massachusetts. There are 30,000 students on waiting lists. However, the waiting list is not what you, it's not what you would think it is because on the waiting list, students are counted as waiting at one vocational school when they may have applied to another. For example, there are students on the waiting list at Essex North Shore who are in the agricultural application process, but because of where they live, they applied to their own regional vocational school and got in there. They will get a vocational education, they just won't get it at Essex North Shore. So it's, again, with any type of a list, it's not precise but it's never explained, just so everyone knows that. In order to expand the number of seats available for students in vocational programs, the expansion program was one way to do that because students would take their, their core courses here or whatever high school they go to if they participate at Essex North Shore, they would get their vocational training there. To truly have enough vocational seats in the state, they would need to build more additions. There are only so many seats in each school. So they're trying to be creative and give opportunities to students for vocational education. And that's one way. Another way is for Peabody to increase our vocational offerings at our own school. When Essex North Shore was coming on board, and the mayor will remember this, I made sure that I advocated for us to start increasing our programs. Because I said, if we can't educate our students on vocational education at Essex North Shore, we owed an obligation to do it here. We were supposed to bring two new programs on every two years. Now, we have got the, the law enforcement, and I'm thrilled to see that. But it was supposed to be a continuing process and a, and, a, and a project to do that so that we would still be able to accommodate all the students. The number of kids in Peabody who want to take vocational education has not changed from the day we met down at City Hall and discussed going into the Essex North Shore system hasn't changed. The numbers still hold true. And there are kids who cobble together a vocational program for themselves. They might only be able to take one class at the high school. They don't count as a vocational student, but they're trying to get those skills. They're taking international foods or international cooking, whatever it's called this time. Those are important things to look at. And I'm going to be really honest. I am not going to give up asking for this. I do it every couple of years. I'm doing it again now. We need to look at increasing the vocational offerings that we have at Peabody, Vocation, Peabody Veterans Memorial High School. My suggestion was to look at programs that did not require a shop, that required a classroom. That's why we have the law enforcement program. There are many others. That IT program, 
We brought it up three years ago because you've got kids here at Higgins who are learning how to repair computers. You come in here during the day, this library is filled with kids who are repairing the Chromebooks of their classmates. Now at the high school, if they could do that, they could get certification. And then when they went off to college, they could either get a job because they're certified and they could work their way through college or they could go right into the industry. We haven't done it. Now you mentioned it, Dr. Vidalman, and I'm not gonna really go after you for this one because you just started, but you walked into this. And I want to see progress on this. I also want to know what we're doing about a full-time director of our CTE program because we need that. God bless Dr. Ferry. She came out of retirement. I think this is the third time she's come out of retirement to help us. But that program deserves a full-time director. It deserves coordination. I know they work very well with Essex North Shore, but we need to continue to work with Essex North Shore because those programs are workforce oriented. That's very important right now. Not everyone's gonna go to college and they need to be able to have preparation here and we need to get everybody on board. The old tropes that come up about, oh, you know, they're skimming the cream of the crop, they're doing this, they're taking money away from the district, no. That kind of talk needs to stop. It needs to improve because we need to realize that we have to provide the education that each of our students need, and some of them need vocational education. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Any other comments, Mr. Miko? Thank you, through the chair. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. I think everyone knows how I feel about that program, the Local 22 program. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about the After Dark program is I, I personally don't like the way it's even marketed, the name After Dark. I just don't think it's, you know, years ago, um, and, and I'll throw a little history here. Um, government had a study out there in education, public schools were failing. It was called The Nation at Risk, early, early 1980s. City of Boston took on that challenge and um, looked at it and said, why are our kids failing? Well, our kids are failing because A, they're coming from lower income and they're, they're just not making the grade, right? So what they did was they instituted co-op programs in Boston high schools. And they partnered up with local colleges, one of them being Northeastern, all right? Northeastern is one of the most difficult schools today to get into in the country, look it up. They offer a five-year co-op program. About 35 years ago, I knew someone who went through the co-op program at East Boston High School, Northeastern. They placed that student over at Massport, or over at Logan Airport, as a file boy making minimum wage. That file boy, 35 years later, is in charge of basically the whole airport, oversees a budget of $895 million. That file boy is my brother. Can't tell me that co-op education is dead. I will support any program that puts high school kids in businesses, and also in college after that. Joe Biden, President Biden today came out with a possibility of a three to four trillion dollar job program. Three to four trillion dollar job program. Now more than likely it won't pass, but the estimates are that it'll be anywhere from 675 billion to a trillion. Construction jobs. They are going to fix every road, every bridge, every highway, every street for the next 10 years. There's no doubt about it. This is going to be what the railroad was and the interstate highway was way back when. For us not to give these students an opportunity, you know, and it's, it really stinks, it does, because the pandemic could not even take out MCAS. Pandemic took out millions of people in this, in this world, but it couldn't take out MCAS. I'll yield. Thank you, Mr. Miko. Mr. Olympio? Thank you. Uh, well said, Mr. Miko, and Ms. Dunn, uh, well said. I agree with everything that you said. And even a few years ago, I remember the, the mayor saying that, you know, there's a, 
there's a, a segment of the students that, you know, we're losing. We're losing each year. Um, and that breaks my heart. It's, you know, not everybody is going to college, uh, especially where the stakes are so high. People just can't afford to go to college um, or they, the debt that they might face is just, it's just overwhelming. So, you know, there are students that, uh, you know, really are kind of lost, you know, in no man's land. And that really breaks my heart that there are some students that are in the eighth grade and ninth grade that don't have much hope. Um, and I think we really do need, I think this is a problem with public schools in general, but, you know, as far as our community, I really do think we need to constantly look at this and do everything we can to do good by our, by our students, especially the ones that, you know, aren't going to go to college, because those are going to be the people that, you know, are going to uh, be in construction and help us out in so many other ways in the community, be part of the community. The worst thing in the world and thing that breaks, breaks my heart the most is when you come across a, a student that's a junior or a senior and they have no hope in their eyes. They, they, they have no direction. And if we can get at them early on in the seventh, eighth grades and we have a plan in place for them once they start high school, I think that's, you know, we'll certainly serve our community and those students and families the best because, like I said, there's nothing worse than when you see a, a, a student with no hope. And I feel like that we have, unfortunately, we do have some of those students that fit that category. And certainly, um, you know, doing away with this uh, program isn't going to help. And I agree, uh, after DOC, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that, uh, that label. So thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Vidal. Thank you for that very lively conversation. I appreciate that. Uh, so just some takeaways that I have, and I'll, and I'll bring this back to the, to the um, committee. I, I think that, you know, just reflecting out loud, we'll incorporate some of this in, into the district goals moving forward because I do think this is important in terms of, of equity and access, uh, making sure the kids have access to this. Um, I'll come to this committee in the fall with a plan for a succession plan for a full-time CTE director, expanding our offerings, in, in career and technical education and additional internship opportunities. And, uh, and I'll you know, show the commitment to this, this committee by putting that into our SMART goals and our district goals for next year that we're really going to take a deep dive into this. Because I know that this is something that is very dear to the committee and to the community, and I think it's something that we need to address in a real holistic way. Um, and so we are committed to that. And so you know, I'll, I'll bring that to this committee in the fall. Um, and so uh, m moving on to the, the final item on the superintendent's report is um, the regular school committee meeting dates for uh, beginning in September. So in your packets you have beginning September 14th, um, twice a month we have the regular school committee meeting. So this is a tentative schedule. There is a typo on this. In January, the second meeting should be the 25th. The, the five was just left out. It says January 2nd. But so it's the 11th and the 25th. Um, you'll notice, too, that we put the student advisory dates back on here. We, we do plan on bringing the students back. I think tonight is a perfect example of when we have students, it does breathe life into our committee meetings. Um, so this is our tentative schedule. I know that some of the dates are subject to change, but if the committee wanted uh, to make any comments on this, we wanted to just at least put out um, some of the, the tentative dates beginning in September. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. Uh, on this, this is done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. I do have a question. Um, pursuant to our policy, we have to meet a minimum of twice a month. Other than July and August, we're allowed to adjust during that time. Is the second meeting in December, is that a problem because of, of the holidays or the vacation? Yes, I believe it's the, tw the, the next one is the 28th. Uh -huh. So that was uh, left off of um, this one because of around the holidays. Okay, so we, we may have to look at that. And we can schedule another meeting if, if there's business to do. Yeah. I think we did that this, this past year. We had uh, quite a bit going on uh, mm -hmm. near the holidays, so we did schedule a second meeting. Right, okay. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to bring it, bring it forward in, during this discussion, but for July and August, we, we usually have at least one meeting in August to help you know, prepare for the, for the first of the year. 
I don't know if you want to schedule that now, but I do think we have to have at least one meeting in August. July, that's up to everybody. There's always work we can do. Um, I know one thing we had talked about, um, and I had talked with uh, Dorothy Presser from MASC, was having um, a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a retreat or, or you know, a retreat or a day away, something like that with Dr. Vidala, where he is the new superintendent. We didn't do that this year because of COVID. And I don't know if anybody would want to do that at some, a short one at some point in July. So I, I just put it out there to let you think about it. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. And I agree. I, I do think we need an August date. Uh, just looking at the calendar, you know, maybe August 19th, or excuse me, August 17th might be a good day uh, to have it. Uh, it'd be a couple, at least a couple weeks before the start of the school year, or we could do August 10th. But I, I do think it's important for us to have one meeting in, in August. And I'm also very glad to see the student advisory. I think all of us really uh, appreciate and, and need uh, to have those the students come and, and talk about what's taking place, the activities, uh, the uh, successes, um, their concerns, things that we need to hear. Um, I think it's very valuable to have uh, those student advisors. I know, I know all of us are very happy to have that back as part of our uh, agendas in, in the future. So I think we should, you know, set a date now for August if, if everybody's comfortable. Um, Ms. Talkman, turn to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Dr. Vidala, thank you. I do see that you have two meetings for us in January of 22, the 11th and the 25th. Okay, um, so I, this is a year that I presume we're gonna go back to um, inaugurations at City Hall and this is an election year for school committee and other municipal offices. And we typically, in years that we have an, an election and an inauguration and a ceremony at City Hall, we typically have our organizational meeting uh, at the Wigan Auditorium. So I'm not sure whether or not we need the January 11 meeting, uh, but that's just, you know, we can have a discussion about that. You had asked about some dates, so I just wanted to throw that out to you. Uh, in regard to um, this year, uh, and this summer, I absolutely agree. This has been a year that you know we're recognizing all sorts of um, not just teachers and principals and administrators, but municipal workers, police officers, firefighters, first responders, um, and, and everyone else out there. This is a year that none of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. We deserve July off, so let's start there. Uh, with regard to an August meeting, we certainly need to meet between now and the start of the school year um, for if, if we plan on meeting, um, and I'm happy meeting early as the 3rd of August, um, I would not be available the 10th or the 17th, and I don't know if the 24th is cutting it too close to the beginning of school for some people's comfort, but you know, I, I, I throw out the other third because it kind of bridges July and August. You know, it gets us to the point where we're not away from this too long, five weeks. Um, and also in the event, and I don't, I hope, hope, let me say hope again, that there's no emergency n that requires us to meet um, later in August. You know, we don't know what the future holds as we've learned in the last 15 months. So uh, I would propose we meet August three, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, and then uh, not again until Dr. Vidala brings us back on September 14, barring some, you know, emergency. We're all we've all been very conscious and good about being available uh, as needed as Dr. Vidala or the mayor, you know, uh, believes is necessary. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. That August 3rd date makes sense to me, and I, I can certainly make that work on my end. Um, open it up for further discussion, Mr. Miko. Sure. Thank you, through the chair, um, Mr. Hockman. That works for me as well. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to bring up for next year's meetings is, will we be offering the um, the online component as well, just in case people, did we? They did extend um, the state legislator, led legislature, and was signed by Governor Baker. They did extend uh, the ability to, to use remote meetings until April, late April of 2022. So that does, it, that is allowable for us in future meetings. Okay, through the chair, thank you. And, and I wasn't thinking on our end, I was just thinking for, for, for the citizens, for our, for our uh, 
anyone who may want to join us or ask questions if they can't make it in public that they could do so through zoom or or whatever platform we use so thank you thank you mr miko any other thoughts on this item okay so we want to move forward with august 3rd 2021 as an additional school committee date we'll see where we're at uh, certainly with his other uh, days that month should we need it that we could have meetings but I think that does make sense kind of in the middle of the summer kind of see where we're at um, and provide assistance to our school district uh, at that time okay so if Dr. Vidal if you can make that uh, addition also that Tuesday August 3rd do you need a vote at this time or is just just for informational at this point We're not meeting until August, we might as well yep. take a vote. Have, uh, anybody would like to make a motion to approve this school committee schedule with the addition of the August 3rd, 2021 date? Yeah, I'll make that motion with also the deletion of the January 11th, 2022 date and the inclusion of whatever inauguration day is. It's the first Monday of January, I believe. Yep. Um, which, subject to an actual inauguration, which we would need for um, our organizational meeting. So that would be January 3rd, would be according to our ordinance, city ordinance, that the, um, the inauguration day would be that first Monday, so it would be September 3rd of 2022. What did I say? Mm -hmm. Let's go with January. <laughs> and if we could. <laughs> <laughs> September really is the new year. Um, if we list it in that as organizational meeting, also that might help clarify why it's a little bit off the schedule too. So that's a good idea. So on the motion, Mr. Olivia, no, sure. quick, I, and I think that second January meeting's a typo. Yeah, twenty fifth. Great. So you've heard the motion by Mr. Hockman for. Uh, the January 3rd, 2022 date to be included as an organizational meeting. Uh, the August 3rd date of 2021, uh, clarifying that it's January 25th of 2022, and then other meetings as, as necessary. So the motion made by Mr. Hockman, seconded by Mr. Olympio. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Arnotis? Yes. Great, and thank you for your report, Dr. Vidal. Is that, that, that hit everything? That concludes the superintendent's report. Great, we'll open it up for public participation. Uh, anyone that would like to speak uh, has that opportunity now. Anybody in our uh, nope. queue? See, seeing none. Okay, uh, we do not have any written communications today, so let's go right to subcommittee reports. Education subcommittee, Mr. Miko. Nothing to report. Okay, uh, we'll hold finance. Uh, school safety, uh, not, Mr. Not, Lipio? Nothing to report. Athletics and wellness, Mr. Arnotis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we met earlier tonight. We had a very productive meeting. Uh, Mr. Amico, Mr. Hockman, and uh, Mrs. Dunn joined us for athletics and subcommittee, um, athletics and wellness rather subcommittee meeting. Um, we de discussed uniforms, we discussed um, improvements to some of our facilities, and we also discussed college preparedness for our athletes. So we are going to continue working um, moving forward and I'll probably schedule an athletics and wellness meeting for um, that August date. Uh, and we also made two motions, um, one being for the uh, business manager to pull some estimates um, on a few different things related to the athletic fields um, up at the high school and then also um, the job description for the athletics director and that role. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. I did catch the, the end of that meeting and there was some real important items being discussed, so I'm happy that that'll continue. I do think there's a lot of information we need to obtain and start planning ahead on different items. Uh, so that's terrific. Okay, quality and standards, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the quality and standards subcommittee met tonight. Uh, uh, Mr. Olympio and Mr. Arnotis were present and we discussed three items on our agenda. First was the displays policy. We're still working on that. We're going to begin, uh, you know, finishing up on that. It's in draft form right now and we wanted to go over it with some more input. Um, another one was honoring of traditions policy. There's a policy we're going to look at. I'm going to actually 
write a, write a message and request Mrs. Maccarelli do her magic with the computer. There was a policy years ago about um, maintaining um, items in schools that were um, at risk of being lost, things that were kind of historical in nature, just you know, pertaining to each building. Could not find it in the policy manual. It could be that it's my copy and it's not here, but it may not have been de decided or passed. So I'm gonna look into it and find it. If we have it, we'll bring it forward and let everyone decide whether to continue with that. And then the um, third was elections of student advisory board. Again, checking here, there's a law. Student advisory boards are elected. By law, they meet with the school committee and they're supposed to be elected at the high school. It's pretty specific. So we're going to um, bring that forward in the form of a policy to include in the manual to make sure that that's followed every year. So that's all we had for tonight and we will schedule meetings accordingly to work on those policies over the summer. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Parent and student advisory boards. This is done. Nothing to report tonight other than to let you know that uh, now that we're past COVID, we're gonna make sure that uh, we meet with the parents, with the parent advisory board and also with the student advisory board. And um, MASC will be offering the training to the students. So uh, that's gonna be nice. Our student advisory board will be invited to that training. Great. Thank you. Uh, building and grounds, Mr. Hockman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, while we haven't had an opportunity to meet, I have uh, traveled around to some of the elementary schools at the request of some uh, parents, some, some staff members, some principals, and I'd like to, uh, or I'll make a motion um, requesting the administration uh, through Dr. Vidala um, to take inventory of the playgrounds at each of the elementary schools and particularly focusing on their condition, um, any improvements that need to be made, uh, any um, to either a structure or to the padding or mulch uh, underneath. Uh, and I will say that I will, once I receive their report and we realize where things stand, I, I am looking to forward to making some sort of schedule uh, in regard to maintenance and improvements to the playgrounds at the public schools. Uh, we know recess is an important part of the day. We know safety is paramount with our students, whether they're in a building or on the playground. And there are deficiencies that exist in, in some of these playgrounds. Historically, I think in Peabody, um, it's been PTOs and private donors that have supported a lot of these structures and facilities. And uh, I, frankly, I'd like to see a change in that culture. I know we have a lot of talented people in the city that do uh, a great job caring for our parks and, and fields. Um, and I'd like to just put a schedule together or put some sort of um, document together that incorporates some of the playgrounds at schools so that we don't get into this situation. And it's not um, a reflection on anybody in particular, but I think there's just been, um, for, for whatever reason, whether it's lack of, of a manpower or lack of resources or um, just a misunderstanding as to who is responsible to take care of what. Uh, I'd like to um, bridge that if we can and have all the stakeholders sit down and figure that out. And I think a good way to start that conversation is to um, take stock of, of where we are right now. So I put that in the form of a motion for superintendent to um, have him, his designee, uh, survey the playgrounds at all of the elementary schools um, and list defects, deficiencies, highlights. You know, we're, we're looking to use best practices also, so um, so moved. Second. The motion by Mr. Hockman, seconded by Mr. Amico. On the motion, Mr. Amico. Sure, through the chair. Mr. Hockman, could you add um, something to that motion as well? Um, I know there was a lot there, but I did get some notification. Um, if we can take a look at the, um, the walkways and the sidewalks here at the Higgins to make sure that they're repainted um, prior to the start of school. And also over at the center school, um, as you're entering the, um, the staff parking lot, the two sidewalks, they are painted yellow, um, but they're not ADA 
compliant. So uh, in terms of, um, in terms of um, having strollers, I know there was a, an event there, uh, moving on ceremony there, and, and there were a couple of people who couldn't get their strollers up and over the sidewalks. I think there's only one part of the sidewalk on the front of the school that has access, but if we can just take a look at that, it may, it may be through the city, but I, just, I think it's, it's, it's probably worth just taking a look at. Appreciate it. Uh, just to add, to, there is a project scheduled on Irving Street at the, the entryway, so that has been brought up, and it, that is going to be, it, it could be started as soon as next week, um, so I know that that is in the plans. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of work that's been outlined by the two of you that needs to be done. Uh, but that I did want to touch on that because that, that is an important project to be done. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Okay, uh, all in favor, of that? Uh, you okay with that additional language? Uh, I think we're all in favor of that motion. Mr. Hockman? Thank you. Um, and while, while we're still talking about building and grounds, we just talked about buildings and um, playground structures. I'd like to talk about the grounds and also ask the superintendent uh, or move to have the superintendent take uh, notice or, or provide us with a report as to the maintenance of the grounds at each of our um, 10 schools. And the reason I, I talk about this is, you know, we just went through, it seems like yesterday, but it's really what, four years ago, Beverly, that um, this building was really planted and, and uh, groomed with a, a thoughtful um, planting process. And um, at, at times, you know, and there were some growing pains with that right we had a we had to work on a schedule for maintenance and thing and mowing and, and things along those lines and we're, you know it's getting there um and i don't see any reason why we don't beautify the outside of all of our schools and highlight the you know the buildings uh, i hate to say some of them are very historic buildings at this point it might qualify for some designation but um you know again these are this is city property and um you know we, we don't, I don't, I don't think we have any budget for beautification. We rely upon whether it's staff members or principals who spend their own money or parents uh, who raise money and spend money. But, um, you know, the city does a really great job of beautifying areas around the city. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce does some great ideas, uh, has some great ideas about doing this. And I'm not necessarily suggesting that we take it on on our own, um, but maybe partner with some other community members uh, to get this done. Um, but I, I would like to um, see some beautification and what we can do with that. But in addition to that, work with some, um, I, I don't know if it would be city departments, whether it be Parks and Recreation or uh, whoever does the contracting for mowing, um, and, but see if, if there's, um, there may already be this, and I don't know, a mowing schedule for each of our schools and if if there is one if we can be presented with it just so we know and if there's not one uh, maybe sit down with the stakeholders and start working on something like that there is one thank you mr mayor i, I wasn't aware of that so thank yeah, you for yeah i was just i was just going to say yeah. the same thing there is one okay <laughs> but of course there's mowing <laughs> there's a schedule and there's an actual breakdown of the areas that have to be tended to because it's um it's it at least i know here at higgins it it's complicated believe it or not because you have facilities which are our custodians at the building you have uh, park and recreation because we have an area that's utilized you know for the, the fields and then the forestry department. And so they have to coordinate and they all have specific areas and they know how far out they have to mow. This property is really complicated because of all the drainage that goes through it and um, because of the maintenance of the natural indigenous plants. Never forget that word. <laughs> and those had to be planted here, um, but they actually, they are working because they're attracting uh, a lot of the, the butterflies and bees, and that was what it was designed to do, to be a very natural um, uh, landscape. But I did learn through that that they have a rotational schedule at each of the schools with specific areas that 
each group is responsible for. Now that facilities takes care of our custodial staff, I think that kind of made it easier because they're under that, you know, you, you've taken like three separate groups and now you've got two that work hand in hand. And of course, they're, they're co-located right up at the city garage, so they work on those all the time. But um, it's, it's pretty detailed here, and I think for the other schools, it, it's not as detailed, but they do have something. Thank you. Sorry for my ignorance on this. It wasn't in the building and grounds handbook that Mr. Amico handed me earlier this year when we quit parole. I, I object. <laughs> I think we had a long conversation about that. No, I'm kidding. Thank you for being so thorough, though. We would chair. And Mr. Hawkins. All right. So that's good information to get. Um, okay. Special Education Parent Advisory Board, Mr. Lipio. Yes, so I will look forward to seeing my special education parents in the fall in person at the Higgins. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, City Council Legislative Delegation, Mr. Arnotis. Uh, we are looking at next week um, for a potential meeting, but I will have that. Um, I will have further information on that hopefully in the next few days. If I can, I want to jump back to just athletic room on this quick. I apologize. I think I should bring forward the motions from our subcommittee to a full vote. Um, of our board here. I'll just go right through them. This was to request from our business manager the cost or estimate of refurbishing the football field, the track, an upgrade to turf, lighting, and some information regarding the upper soccer fields, um, or, and baseball field rather, uh, refurbishment up there as well. So I will move that motion forward um, for a full vote here on our committee. All right, you've heard the motion by Mr. I noticed, seconded by Mr. Hockman. All in favor? Yes. Okay. And then the second one was to have a review of the role of the athletic director's responsibilities. Okay. You've heard the motion by Mr. I noticed, seconded by Mr. Hockman. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. I think that was the right thing, Mr. I noticed. That was good. All right, uh, redistricting. Mr. Hockman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we did meet last night for redistricting, and we are now um, looking at, I think we put forward nine options in regard to the redistricting uh, that are going to be uh, explored and challenged by the members of that subcommittee. Uh, we have decided to take the summer off and are not reconvening until September. Uh, I believe it's September, it's the second Monday in September. I think it's the 13th. Um, but it's starting to get a little exciting um, because of the hard work that that talented group has put forward and uh, we're now starting to look at some possible options available to us. And before uh, this really, we talked about it at the um, Athletics and Wellness Subcommittee and Mr. Onotis brought this up. Um, so I, I'll just report it because I have the microphone. Uh, we, we all wanted to wish Heather McLean, a Peabody resident who qualified for the Tokyo Olympics well in her endeavor um, in, uh, in Tokyo and we're couldn't be more proud of her and Andrew spoke at length during the subcommittee meeting but uh, I figured we would just get it all out there for the general public. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Any other items before we break? This is done. It's just, just one. I, because Dr. Vidala is coming to the uh, end of his first year and beginning of his second year, we really threw him off with our um, calendar on evaluations. But we do need to have an evaluation of him for the for his end of year and then, you know, his goals. So over the summer, we need to set up a, a good a good schedule and a good program for that. To we won't get right back on track, but we can't let it go too far because it would really throw off his schedule that he's required um, to be able to provide like a mid-year update and end of year update. So it, it's just something we need to work on while we're, while we're taking a break. <laughs> this is done. Mr. Amico, did you have an item? Oh, no. All right, so um, thank you everyone for your hard work and we'll move forward. Uh, best wishes for a good summer. <laughs> Thanks everyone.